are COVID-19 vaccines promoting the formation of stealth-adapted variant coronaviruses? Public health officials seem not to realize the probable role of COVID-19 vaccines in hastening the development of stealth-adapted coronaviruses. Indeed, they have still not accepted the existence of widespread human infections with stealth-adapted monkey-derived viruses. These viruses were inadvertently introduced into humans from polio vaccines. This occurred as the consequence of using polio vaccines grown in the cultured kidney cells of cytomegalovirus-infected monkeys. A faulty assumption is that the current COVID-19 vaccines provide immunity that is comparable to that of natural infections. This is clearly not so. First, the vaccine is given by intramuscular injections, whereas natural infections occur via the respiratory mucosa. Intramuscular injections are not particularly effective in stimulating the development of mucosal immunoglobulin A IgA, antibodies or resident cytotoxic T lymphocytes CTL. The lowered level of vaccine-induced mucosal immunity means that upon exposure to SARS-CoV-2 virus, a proportion of vaccinated individuals will likely acquire a persisting, subclinical infection that is restricted to the superficial respiratory mucosa. Public health authorities allude to this possibility by insisting that those who are immunized will need to continue wearing masks. The persisting low-level infections will, however, provide the opportunity for the emergence of virus variants. Some of these will be more infectious, while others will be better able to evade vaccine-evoked immunity and, therefore, become more widespread throughout the body. The second major difference between the vaccine and natural infection is FDA's allowance of the use of a single virus component in the vaccine, namely the spike protein. It is far easier for virus modification, or even deletion, of a single component than it is for concurrent changes to occur in the multiple antigens targeted by immunity to natural infections. Deletion of the spike protein is possible since coronaviruses have other means of entering into cells. The virus can then more easily undergo changes in the remaining genes that code for the relatively few virus components typically targeted by cellular immunity. The persistence of subclinical infections due to the relative lack of mucosal immunity achieved by intramuscular injections and the systemic immune response being restricted to only the spike protein, can lead more rapidly than will natural infection, to the formation of stealth-adapted coronaviruses. A corollary of this premise is that the English, South African, and Brazilian variants probably originated in individual participants of the COVID-19 vaccine trials conducted in each of the countries. With wider vaccine use, many more variants, including stealth-adapted coronaviruses, are to be expected. Stealth adaptation has another very concerning feature. It is the incorporation of additional genetic sequences that are probably required for the virus to regain infectivity. The added sequences can come from the cellular genome and from the genomes of other microbes. This has, for example, allowed polio vaccine-derived stealth-adapted viruses to bring monkey cellular sequences into humans. The brain is particularly susceptible to symptomatic illnesses caused by stealth-adapted viruses. These viruses can be cultured from patients with the chronic fatigue syndrome CFS, and also from children with autism. The long COVID syndrome has many clinical features in common with CFS. Until proven otherwise, the long COVID syndrome should be considered as a viral illness with the potential of human-to-human -human transmission, including during pregnancy. It is critical to begin culturing blood samples from patients with the long COVID syndrome and to sequence any resulting viruses. Although the cellular immune system will normally not engage with stealth-adapted viruses they can still be suppressed via the alternative cellular energy, ACE, pathway. This pathways has likely preceded photosynthesis in plants and the obtaining of energy by all life forms from the metabolism of food. In humans and animals, the brain is probably the major receiver of the life force energy for the ACE pathway. The attracted energy is then transferred to the body's fluids where it is expressed as an added kinetic activity. The energy is termed KELEA, an abbreviation for kinetic energy limiting electrostatic attraction. KELEA can also be added to water, which is then termed KELEA accelerated water. Wearable pouches containing this water and inhaling nebulized mists from the water are being evaluated as simple means of enhancing the ACE pathway. These approaches can seemingly suppress both conventional and stealth-adapted virus illnesses.